Com. Here we are again for our Saturday slot and I do hope you're all well, that you've been enjoying the lovely weather and perhaps planning a little for the future but with a little caution. Now for a change I thought I'd start today with a little story. It's about a church in America and they were searching for a new pastor and preacher and a committee had been set up and a member of that committee finally lost patience as the group had rejected applicant after applicant for some fault or another, alleged or otherwise. It was time for a bit of soul searching on the part of the committee and so this chap stood up and read a letter supposedly to be from another applicant and this is how it went. Gentlemen, on the understanding that your pulpit is empty, I'd like to apply for the position of your new pastor. I have many qualifications. I've been a preacher for many years with much success and I've also had some success as a writer. Some say I'm a good organiser and I've been a leader in most of the places I've been to. I'm over 50 years of age now. I've never preached in one place for more than three years. And in some places I've left town after my work caused riots and disturbances. I must admit I've been in jail three or four times, but not because of any real wrongdoing. I'm afraid my health isn't so good though. And I, but I still manage to get quite a lot done. The churches I've preached in have been small, though they've been located in several large cities. I haven't really got on well with the religious leaders in the towns where I've preached. In fact, some have threatened me and even attacked me physically. I'm not too good on keeping records either. I have been known to forget who I who I've baptised. However, if you can use me, I will do my very best for you. The committee member looked over to his fellow members. Well, what do you think, he said, shall we call him? But the rest of the committee looked appalled. You aren't serious. You want to call an unhealthy, troublemaking, absent-minded ex-jailbird? Who has the nerve to send in such an application? The man eyed up the committee keenly and then just answered very calmly. It signed the Apostle Paul. Well, I hope you appreciated that story. We all know that Paul himself thought him, he was not good enough. He considered himself the greatest sinner of all. But he was called, chosen. By God and was the man to fight the good fight. God calls us for a purpose, yes all of us, and not all for the same purpose though. We don't have to be perfect, squeaky clean, without sin, because indeed Paul wasn't. But just think about all his achievements. The early Christian church spread in the way it did because of his work and his words. How he inspired people, how he made them think and how he challenged. At the moment, there's a group of us studying Paul's letter to the Romans on our new Zoom Bible study group. And oh, how we are being challenged by his words. Let's think about being called. Being called is God's invitation and the call is different for everyone. What we are called to do is different for everyone. And call means you have gifts and talents that are needed in the church and in the world. There are times when we hear a great deal about this. It tends to be around Thanksgiving Sunday 
when we're reminded about the money we give to church, but also we're very often reminded about our gifts and talents that can be used. Can be used in church, in the parish, or in activities connected with church. We all have gifts and talents, and indeed, during this time of lockdown, we have seen some new talents, haven't we? New and different talents shining through our online services, but also in the acts of kindness we're hearing about all the time when people have been so creative. It is interesting to read in the Bible that those whom God called didn't always immediately say yes, but sometimes hesitated a great deal before finally answering God's call. If you think about Moses, he objected many times and Jeremiah struggled with his vocation. Isaiah, however, volunteered to answer God's call and Abraham immediately left his country when instructed. And we all know how Mary responded. Be it done unto me according to your word. Her response was an immediate yes. We're all called to serve God and to serve God is the greatest form of love or charity as it is sometimes expressed, the pure love of Christ. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That comes from John's Gospel. Serving God starts with serving our families, probably, as we lovingly give ourselves to our family and serve them with hearts full of love, not just duty. Our acts will count as service to God. And yes, contributing financially to God's work is a great way to serve God. That's something else we've heard about lately, as we all worry that many, many churches are suffering through no public worship and public offerings, and all fundraising activities are curtailed. And serving others. In the community, charitable works like donating and giving of our time, very important. Being a good friend, serving children and also the elderly, sick and bereaved. And some mundane things like cleaning the church, the upkeep of the church, things that often go unnoticed. All of this is being called to serve in the love of God. But sometimes the calling is greater. By listening and hearing God's call, recognising and accepting, many people make a personal commitment to use their gifts and talents to serve God and his people in a different way. Well, tomorrow, Pentecost Sunday, that very important festival the church's birthday, the time when we think of the disciples being filled with the Holy Spirit and giving them the gift of tongues. We are reminded that Jesus is history until the Spirit makes Jesus part of that history. And the Spirit does that because the Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit sent by Jesus, the memory for, of Jesus for us. Now every week the church preaches its beliefs, its doctrines and teachings, but it can wash right over us until it's brought alive by the Spirit. It is the Spirit that makes it possible for us to use our gifts and move ahead in our Christian lives. I remember my very first sermon after being licensed. And I spoke about being moved by the Spirit in the Holy Land, in one of my favourite places. 
the primacy of Peter, where we stood by the spe special statue of Jesus and Peter and heard the gospel reading from John 21, where Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? Not once, but three times. And the passage ends, follow me. I think I will read it. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all these things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. That gospel passage has always been special to me as standing in that very holy place, I knew that finally I'd made my decision that the time was right for me to go forward with my reader selection. And many of you know, I'd put it on hold for two years after Derek, my husband, had died. But then in the Holy Land, I knew that was the time. And I know that God has been at my side throughout so many times in my life. The ups and the downs, the highs and the lows. I know he's been with me throughout my ministry and I know he'll be always there. Ministry is not simply about serving the church. Ministry is about sharing in God's love for the world. And I hope I can continue to keep that at the heart of all my future ministry. I pray to God. I pray may the Holy Spirit work within me so that I am now used by him in whatever way he wants. Now a prayer to reflect. Lord, we know that you do call us. Help us to listen to your call. Help us to recognise it and to accept it. Help us discover your personal word for us, your personal demands on us, your personal will for our lives. You have given us all talents and gifts and may we use them in service to you, your church and all the world. Amen. So let us now finish with the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please stay safe and well until next week. Goodbye.